What? What's up everyone, welcome to the speedcube.co.nz YouTube channel. My name's Mike and in this video I'm going to take a look at the new RS3M 2021 aka the Maglev one and I'm going to be joined by Speedy Pro team member, Big Cube Goddess and now national TV star Angela Braganza. But before we get started, don't forget to hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel and smash the bell icon too so you don't miss any future videos. The RS3M 2021 is in a tough spot, as the RS3M 2020 is still the biggest selling cube we've ever had here at speedcube.co.nz. It's reliable, popular, customizable and cheap, so that means the 2021 is immediately at a disadvantage as it has some big shoes to fill. However, the 2021 version comes with a not so secret anymore weapon, which is maglev or magnetic levitation elasticity in place of the springs and is the first cube on the market to ever feature this tech. We'll talk more about that in a bit though. Inside the box is going to be very familiar to anyone who's got an RS3M 2020 or any other MoU budget cube for that matter. There's a cube, a stand and a box of bits. Inside the bit box is also very familiar and includes a spare core mm, cup for want of a better term and a MoU dual adjustment system tool, a MoU screwdriver, instructions for the tension system you have and for a display case you don't, plus the obligatory CFOP pamphlet featuring everything you need to know about MoU. The cube itself, as you'll probably know by now, is identical to the RS3M 2020 from the piece design to the core to the dual adjustment system, but inside the adjustment system is where we're keen to take a look just now. The maglev idea has been around for a few years, but for whatever reason, probably because they were all obsessed with adjustable edge magnets, manufacturers haven't got near it until now. Plus, there are some patent shenanigans that have been going on for a while too. I don't know all the details, have a look on Reddit if you care. Essentially, it's very simple. Instead of a spring providing the elasticity, there are now two opposing magnets that do it instead. This means zero friction from the elasticity system, ultimately meaning a faster turning cube. And whether or not you think it's important, this tech also eliminates any spring noise from your cubes. Taking off the top layer allows you to see what's happening and also gives you an idea of how strong the magnets are once you really compress them. The repulsion of the magnets when they're close is a lot more than what a spring would give and I wonder whether that different curve of tension might affect the feel for faster solvers. I'm sure someone smarter than me will make a video about it. Finally, for the statistically inclined, the cube weighs in at a substantial 92 grams due to the extra magnet swag and measures in at 55 and a half millimeters across. With all the maglev excitement out of the way, it's time to let someone loose on it and get their thoughts. So let's switch now to Angela and see what she reckons to the maglev hype. I was really excited to try out the RSA in 2021, and this cube did not disappoint. Out of the box, it is extremely fast and a bit sandy, but the tensions were good so I didn't change them. I immediately added two drops of DNM, which was a huge mistake. I recommend adding a thicker lube to slow down the cube. Overall, it is very easy to turn, probably because the layers feel quite light in my hands. This helped my soles flow better and just felt more satisfying to turn. The feel is also quite crisp, which I personally really like about a 3x3. The magnets are a bit stronger than the 2020 version, but it's definitely required because of how fast and uncontrollable it is. Both the RS3Ms are great and I highly recommend the 2021 to anyone that is looking for a new 3x3. Thanks so much to Mike for letting me do this review. Bye. Thanks so much Angela for appearing in the vid. Now, it's time for my reckons. First impressions, this cube is fast, and I mean uppercase, bold, underlined, italic fast. Out of the box, the dual adjustment system is set at the lowest of its eight settings, so I immediately cranked it up to halfway and also put in a slower mix of my favorite lube, Celeritas, at a three to one AB ratio, so as to make it smooth, but no faster than it already is. While this made an impact and made it a little less spicy, it still wasn't right for me, and I've been on a bit of a journey with this thing over the last seven days. I gave the Celeritas a good go and a solid break-in before trying the tensions a little tighter, but the cube became kind of weird at this point too, and there's definitely something the maglev does at higher tension settings that springs don't. 
and it was still hard for me to control consistently. One of the benefits that I found was that the cubes sort of forced me to slow down during F2L, which is probably a good thing as these intentionally slower solves were almost always really good times by my standards. And even though these settings weren't what I settled on, they are what the cube was set to when I got this random 17. The scramble is very silly though. Find it in the description below and post your times in the comments. So finally, I dialed back the tensions to halfway and found that the perfect lube as far as I'm concerned for this cube is Traxxas 30k, which I should have known because Chris uses Traxxas in his pro model. It's almost like he knows what he's doing, hey, but don't tell him I said that. As I mentioned, testing this cube over a week was kind of a journey and it felt a bit apocalyptic at times from the worldwide outage of Facebook and Instagram to this freaking earthquake that happened while I was filming. Honestly, I think the combo of maglev and me getting another 17 second solve did some Something bad to space and time. Sorry everyone. Anyway, here are my overall thoughts. Out of the box, it's fast, fast, fast. If you don't believe me, go and try the stock one we've got on display at the shop. It's out of control. The weight of it is no advantage or disadvantage in my opinion, but it does feel like a nice solid puzzle if that matters to you. I personally quite like it, but then I rarely do more than 50 solves in a session, so that weight might not affect me as much as it does Big Rippers. Overall though, I think it's important to just take this cube for what it is, and that's the first of its kind. And what I realized over the week is that this is different, it is new, and maybe I need to spend some more time with it and embrace that fact, and maybe not fight it too much to make it feel like what I'm used to. I've got the Worm 21 Maglev and the GAN 12 Maglev on the way to me right now so this will not be the last maglev cube i have a play with this month and i'm gonna reserve overall judgment on the tech just now until i've tried it in more cubes suffice to say it's different and going back to what i said at the start will this ever outsell the 2020 only time will tell. Finally, if you have one of these already, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. We've sent heaps of them out since they released, and I really wanna know what people are thinking about this new advancement in Speedcube Tech. For now though, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, happy solving, and I'll catch you over in one of these other videos soon. Peace.